Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we have seen in case of conduction how to do analysis on composite cylinders and composite wall. Let us solve few problem based on composite cylinder. Let us read a problem based on composite cylinder. The problem is asked in May 17 in Mumbai University. Let us read the problem. The problem says a steam pipe made up of steel whose thermal conductivity is given K equal to 58 watt per meter Kelvin has a ID that is the inner diameter of 160 mm and OD that is outer diameter of 170 mm. The saturated steam flowing through it is at 300 degrees Celsius. So basically they have given us a steel pipe whose inner diameter and outer diameter is given and then the steel pipe carries steam at 300 degrees Celsius while the ambient air is at 50 degrees Celsius. So the outside air temperature is given as 50 degrees Celsius. It has two layers of insulation. The inner layer is having thermal conductivity as 0.17 watt per meter Kelvin and it is 30 mm thick and outer layer is having thermal conductivity as 0.023 watt per meter Kelvin and it is having thickness of 50 mm. The heat transfer coefficient on inside and outside wall are 40 watt per meter square Kelvin and 5.8 watt per meter square Kelvin respectively. They are asking us to find the rate of heat loss per unit length of the pipe. So the pipe length is given as unity. So let us start solving the same problem. As you can see here, I have drawn only a quarter size of cylinder. See this inner radius R1 here indicates the inner radius of pipe and R2 indicates the outer radius of pipe. So basically this is a steel pipe. R1 which is given as 80 mm you might have observed that they have given us the diameter as 160 mm. So we have to write R1 as 80 mm. R2 that is outer diameter of pipe they have given as 85 mm. Then what they have given is there are two insulations. First one is having thermal conductivity K1 and the second one is having thermal conductivity K2. The K1 and K2 value they have given as 0.17 and 0.023. Let us write they have given the thickness of two insulation as 30 and 50 mm. So accordingly I have written the R3 value as 85 plus 30 so that is 115 mm and R4 as 115 plus 50 so that is 165 mm. So these are the dimensions of the pipe and insulation. They have also given us the inside temperature. So that I have indicated as TS. So TS they have given as 300 degrees Celsius and TA which is the ambient temperature that we have written as 50 degrees Celsius. They have given us the heat transfer coefficient for the inside steam that is HI I have written which they have given as 40 and HO that is the heat transfer coefficient for the air ambient air that they have given as 5.8 watt per meter square Kelvin. Now they are asking us to find out the value of Q dash that is in our case the Q dash is a notation for heat transfer rate per unit length. So Q dash upon L you can write this as Q dash upon L or you can write this as Q dash itself by assuming L equal to 1. So let us start solving this problem. First of all, after drawing this schematic diagram, we need to draw a thermal circuit diagram. So let me draw this node as TS. Then there is a resistance offered by the steam. So that resistance I will write as RHI. Then the other node will come into picture. Let me write this as the temperature is T1. Then one more resistance offered by the pipe itself. So that I will be writing as RKS. Then the intermediate temperature between the steel and the insulator. Let me write this as T2. Then the thermal resistance offered by the first and second insulation. 
so that let me write r k1 and r k2 with the intermediate temperature as t3 then finally the resistance offered by the air so let me write this as r h o the intermediate temperature here is let's say r4 and then obviously the final temperature is r a which is the ambient temperature now here if i need to find out the rate of heat transfer that is q dash i must know all the five resistance over here so let us start finding all those five resistance one by one before finding those resistance as i have told you before we should follow the pattern then we need to first of all write down the data then what is to be find find out and then the assumptions without assumptions we cannot complete our solution for any given problem in heat transfer we must list down the assumptions so in our case the assumptions are obviously the first one is we are only considering the conduction and convection mode of heat transfer the radiation mode of heat transfer is assumed to be zero in any practical problem all the three type of mode of heat transfer will coexist but in our case for the simplicity of the problem we will assume that the heat transfer by radiation is negligible second one is here we will consider that in case of a cylinder there is no heat transfer in phi or zeta direction the only heat transfer takes place in r direction so it's a one dimensional heat transfer so only radial heat transfer is considered in this case third one is no generation of heat so heat generation is zero over here fourth one the heat transfer is a steady state means the rate of change of temperature with respect to time so not just temperature any parameter with respect to time is zero and the last one is the thermal conductivity that is k small k is considered to be constant it is not a function of x y z or temperature now as i told before let us start finding all the resistance r h i so that is the thermal resistance offered by the steam so obviously we know the formula it is 1 upon h i into area now for area we need to consider here h i into the area area is a surface area so in this case my surface area is 2 pi r1 into l the length so let me put the numbers the value of h i in our case is 40 2 pi the value of r1 is 0 0.08 and length we are going to consider as 1 so with this i can say that the value of r h i is equal to 0 0.04973 kelvin per watt so that is my first thermal resistance now similarly find out the thermal resistance offered by the ambient air that is r h o so obviously it is 1 upon s0 and then the area will be the surface area of the outer insulation so which is 2 pi in this case it will be the outer radius which is r4 into l so if i put the numbers the value of ho in our case was 5.8 it was given into 2 pi and then the outer radius was 165 mm so 0.165 meter and obviously the length is considered as 1 meter so with this the value of r ho that is the thermal resistance offered by the air is 0 0.1663 kelvin per watt now in the same way we must find out the other resistance that is the thermal resistance offered by the pipe and the two insulations so let us start finding this so as i told you before we will represent the thermal resistance offered by the pipe as r k s we know the formula which is ln of outer radius that is r2 upon the inner radius that is r1 
अपॉन टू पाए एल के एस अगेन आई विल सब्सक्रू द नंबर सो एल एन ऑफ आर टू दैट इज आउटर रेडियस इज एटी फाइव नाउ सिंस हियर वी आर कंसिडरिंग द रेशियो नो नीड टू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू मीटर सो इट इज एल एन ऑफ एटी फाइव अपॉन एटी डिवाइडेड बाय टू पाए लेंथ इज वन एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ के एस इज फिफ्टी एट इज वॉट दे आर गिवन विद दिस द वैल्यू ऑफ आर के एस वी आर गेटिंग इज वन पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स थ्री इन टू टेन रेस टू माइनस फोर केलविन पर वैट लेट इज फाइंड आउट सिमिलरली द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफर्ड बाय द फर्स्ट इंसुलेशन विच इज आर के वन इट इज एल एन ऑफ आर थ्री बाय आर टू अपॉन टू बाय एल इन टू के वन सो इफ आई पुट द नंबर्स एल एन ऑफ द वैल्यू ऑफ आर थ्री वॉज वन वन फाइव एम एम एंड एटी फाइव इज माई वैल्यू ऑफ आर टू ओ हियर डिवाइडेड बाय टू बाय द वैल्यू ऑफ एल इज अज्यूम्ड एज वन and the value of k1 they have given as 0.17 so this way if i put the numbers then the thermal resistance that i will get is 0.282 kelvin per watt so this way the value of r k1 we are getting is 0.282 kelvin per watt now the final resistance thermal resistance that we need to find out is r K1 again R K1 is ln of R3 upon R4 divided by 2 pi L K2. The values are R3 value is obviously 115, R4 is 165 upon 2 pi L is 1, and the thermal conductivity that they have given is 0. Zero two three. Now, if I put these numbers, then the value of R K one is this is R K two. In fact, so the value of R K two that we are getting is two point four nine eight one kelvins per watt. Now here we have found out all the resistance. So if I say that summation of all the resistance is R H I plus R H O plus R K S plus R K one and the this one R K two. Then the total thermal resistance is two point nine nine seven kelvins per watt. This is the number that we are getting, and all of you know that by Fourier's law, we can say that. Q dash is nothing but delta T upon the total thermal resistance offered. Now here, what is delta T? They have given us that the inside temperature, that is the steam temperature, is T S, and outside temperature is T A. T S and T A values are given. So if I simply substitute those number. The value of T S they have given is three hundred, and the value of ambient air they have given is fifty degrees Celsius. If I do it this way, then finally the heat transfer rate that I am getting is eighty three point four watt per meter. Here, as we have seen before, we have considered the length of the cylinder as One meter. Hence, the value that we will be getting is always.